One of the most frustrating parts of growing a garden is that it varies from place to place. Advice that works for one gardener is not always going to be the same for another. So if you can find somebody that is in your same state and specifically your same zone, that is best. So if you are a fellow California gardener, specifically here in the Central Valley, this video is for you. I've grown up in the Central Valley my entire life and I have learned to garden from family and friends who have been here for generations. And now that I've learned all of this knowledge and I've had success of my own here in the garden, my greatest passion is now sharing that with you. So throughout this video today, I will be sharing five tips that will help you to have massive success in your vegetable garden. So my very first tip is to plant cool and warm season crops during the correct time of year. And I know you might be wondering right now, what are cool season crops and what are warm season crops? Well, that was a question that I got all of the time. So when I created my guide, the complete zone nine vegetable gardening guide, I made sure to include an entire section all about cool season crops and warm season crops and when they should actually be planted. And the link to the guide will be in the description below, but essentially warm season crops are those that cannot tolerate a frost. And so they need to be planted after all danger of frost has passed, when the weather is warm and they are going to continue growing all summer long until the first frost hits. Or if you live somewhere that actually doesn't have a frost, just until the weather is too cold and those plants just can't thrive anymore. Examples of some common warm season crops include beans, cucumbers, okra, tomatoes, peppers, and squash. But the great thing about being in a zone such as zone nine or above is that they have really long growing seasons. And so if you miss your first planting date, it's no problem because you can continue planting most warm weather crops all throughout the summer. In fact, I actually recommend it because then you are able to extend your harvest well into the summer and into the beginning of fall Whereas if you only plant on your first planting date in early spring, those plants sometimes start fizzling out by the end of summer. And so having those new plants that were planted all throughout the season, just extend your harvest for a lot longer. Then when it comes to cool season crops, those are ones that thrive in temperatures around 55 to 75 degrees. And so in our area here in zone nine, they typically need to be planted in fall or very early spring. And the problem I see a lot of gardeners make is that they plant these crops in early spring when it still feels cool, but then as soon as the weather warms up, those plants don't grow well anymore or they just bolt and head to seed because the weather is no longer favorable for their growth. But I know it can get really confusing if you listen to advice from other gardeners from different zones because there's so many areas in the United States that can grow carrots and broccoli and cauliflower all throughout spring and maybe even early summer without any issues. But unfortunately here in zone nine, that's not the case. My second tip is to have an effective watering schedule, especially during the hot months. We have our garden set up on irrigation and a timer and it's such a lifesaver because it saves so much time just day to day, not having to worry about watering everything. But it also allows us to step away from the garden when we are going through busy seasons of life or if we want to go out of town for a few days, whatever the case may be, having your garden on irrigation and a timer is truly a lifesaver. But if you can't have your garden on a timer or set up on irrigation, that's totally fine. But you need to be sure that you water your plants enough. Usually people tend to over or underwater and both can be harmful. So you want to water enough that your plants don't dry out completely in between waterings, but you don't want things sopping wet that, and just completely oversaturated either. So in the beginning of the season, when my plants are small and just getting established, I usually water a little bit less, but I water more frequently so that the soil is staying moist, but the soil isn't getting too wet. But then as the plants get more established and the roots get larger and the plants start getting a little bit bigger, I usually will water for a little bit longer and sometimes I'm able to go every other day or every couple of days. But you truly have to just watch your own plants and see how everything looks. So depending on your own situation, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to adjust your watering schedule, but watering effectively is crucial for success. But then when those cooler months arrive, remember that you don't always have to water every day. Um, I love gardening in the cooler weather because there's most days that we don't have to water at all. I just completely shut off the timer. I may water by hand a few times a week or every other week, depending on how much rain we're getting, but it's just great because it just takes so much less effort. And so remember, if the weather's cooler, you may not really have to water as much as you think. And now tip number three is to take advantage of succession planting. Here in zone nine, we can plant crops multiple times a year or sometimes even every couple of weeks, depending on the crop. For example, there are short half and long season crops. And that just means how long it takes that plant to reach maturity from the time of planting. 
And in my zone nine guide that will be linked below, I list all of that information and I go over all of the crops and how long their season length is. And that's important to know because it allows, it pretty much tells you when you can plant that crop and when you're going to get a harvest. So if you're planting something in late summer, it has to reach maturity before that first frost hits. And so you can, pretty, you can plant short and half season crops pretty much all summer long through the end of summer, as long as that last planting date gives that plant plenty of time to mature before the first frost comes. But then when it comes to longer season crops, they take longer to mature, such as winter squash and tomatoes. And so it's best to just plant those a few times earlier on in the season to ensure that they can reach maturity before the weather's not favorable anymore. So with crops that are quicker to mature, like bush beans and cucumbers and squash, I usually plant those every few weeks or at least once a month so that I can space out my harvest and they mature so quickly that it's nice having just a few at a time versus one whole huge planter full and I'm able to space out my harvest but I can have healthier plants as my older plants maybe be, have a pest issue or if they start dying off for whatever reason I can just pull out those older ones but I always have fresh ones that are growing because I try to stagger my plantings to be every few weeks or once a month. But one important thing to keep in mind as you're using succession planting in your garden is to make sure that you plant enough of whatever crop at once to accomplish whatever it is that you want that crop for. So if you want to have enough tomatoes to can spaghetti sauce, you're gonna need one really big harvest of tomatoes, so you're gonna need more than just a couple tomato plants. Same goes for and having enough cucumbers if you wanna make pickles or pickled okra. You're going to definitely need more than just a couple of plants. But when it comes to things that you just wanna eat fresh, like say zucchini or summer squash, or even if you just want your cucumbers for a salad, you can get away with just a couple of plants. Tip number four is to plant what you can directly by seed. There are some crops that should always be planted as transplants, such as tomatoes and peppers. And then there are crops that should always be directly sown by seed, like carrots and radishes and baby mixed lettuce. But then there are crops that can be transplanted or directly sown by seed, such as cucumbers and squash but they're going to do much better if you just plant them directly by seed. So here's a quick example of my cucumber plants. And this one right here that I'm showing you was planted as a transplant. And this one next to it was planted by seed and they are already almost the same size. And so it's definitely worth it planting them by seed because they just grow much healthier and you really don't get a bigger plant that much faster. This one is growing just as fast, if not faster than the one planted as a transplant. So if you would like to know which crops to directly sow by seed and which to transplant, all of that information is also in my zone nine vegetable gardening guide. So remember that link will be below. And now for tip number five, which is to plant varieties that actually thrive in your zone. Some vegetables out there are summer vegetables and they can handle the heat, but they can't always handle our heat, the hot, hot summer heat. And so it's important to grow crops that are meant for our areas so that you can have the best success possible. You can still have success with lots of vegetables out there, but if you can plant varieties that are known to thrive in our area, you're gonna have the best success. And the great thing that I'm super excited about is that I was able to work with a company and put together an assortment of all of my tried and true vegetable varieties that I have planted season after season and have had great success with. And it's called the Zone 9 Garden collection and it's sold at True Leaf Market. And if you head to this video right here, I go over each variety with you and a little bit about each vegetable and how to grow it. And so if you would like to learn more, head to that video, or if you would just like to get your own assortment, that link will be in the description. So I will see you there.